Hello, I'm Duke Cardoso with Career Full Action. I'm Griffin Lemaster. And uh, we're here today to show you a couple of pieces that we have in our museum that we really love. Uh, this is the Adrian Special Shoe Fitting Machine. It's a couple of, these are a couple of examples of the early days of X-ray inspection. Uh, this system here is from the 1920s. Uh, and that machine is from the 40s. And uh, Griffin, why don't you tell us what it's supposed to do? Yeah, so what happened was a shoe salesman, uh, in order to fit your shoe the best way possible, uh, would ask the, you know, his customer to come in, stand up on the platform, stick their feet inside the, the holes down here, and what they would do is they'd stand behind the machine, they'd press the button, and they'd look through one of these holes. And what they see is they see the x-ray, they, so they see the outline of your foot through, your, through the shoe and can tell if it fit, fits well or not. Um, and so this is all, you know, a very basic crude uh, uh, x-ray machine. Um, it's, it's a wood structure uh, with an x-ray tube at the bottom, a uh, phosphorescent screen that showed the x-ray image. Now, can you tell us about uh, safety of these machines? Because I can tell it's, uh, you know, pretty much wood. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty much wood. You're absolutely right. Uh, it's very basic uh, as far as radiation protection goes. Uh, there's, there's some steel lining in there, um, some actual protection around the source itself. But other than that, there was not much shielding from, for the customer or especially for the shoe salesman. Yeah, I mean, there are reports of uh, a lot of Shoe salesmen actually complaining of uh, radiation burns. I mean, that's how you know strong radiation were on those guys. Yeah, in fact, the, this system it says right on on there it says excessive exposure to X-rays is harmful, and shoe fitting should be limited to three per day and not more than twelve per year. Yeah, but that doesn't apply to the shoe salesman, right? Not Just at all. The Just the customer. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I mean, this what I love about these machines as well is it's uh, it's an example of how fast X-ray technology went from a discovery at Rutgers lab in the late 1800s to application, right? Yeah. So Rutgers discovery was in 1890s and just 20 years later, 20 few, seven years later, yeah. you had these machines in the market. So we're talking about, you know, 20, 30 years at the time where we didn't have the internet or email, you know, if you had to yeah. communicate with someone, you're talking about writing a letter, right? Mm -hmm. And then waiting for, uh, uh, you know, postman to deliver to uh, whoever sent it to. So it's, it's very impressive how fast and how um, uh, ubiquitous this machine has got to be uh, in the uh, at every uh, shoe store. You're talking about from the very first x-ray photograph that was taken to yeah. where they were using it in medical uh, diagnosis uh, to then use practical applications of the shoe fitting. Yeah, and uh, it's pretty funny. I saw some reports where uh, the stores were actually complaining that people were coming to the store just for the x-ray and not to buy shoes. So there were lines <laughs> outside the store, you know, uh, for people that wanted to see their toes wiggle in the x-ray machine, but not necessarily wanted to buy a shoe. Well, that's a fun part. There's three, there's three viewing ports on the top of each of these machines. Uh, one right in front for the person that's getting their shoe fit. You got one on the side for the shoe salesman, and one on the other side for whoever the you know customers with, just to take a look through. So yeah, if they have like a kid it. and his exactly. you know, their mom. Mm -hmm. And I love this the machine here from the twin is the, the Art Deco Absolutely. details and all the little you know car details in the wood. I mean, it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. It's like straight out of the movie Metropolis. It looks really cool. <laughs> it's, yeah, so both these machines are from Adrian Special, which is a Wisconsin company, right? And um, the inventor of this machine, uh, for that is called Dr. Uh, Jacob Lowy. Uh, he actually got a patent for this machine in 19, uh, 1919, and then eventually he sold this patent to, or licensed the technology, the machine itself, to the Adrian Special in 1927. And, um, it's really amazing how um, you know how these things were built and how beautiful they are. Now, when did they stop being uh, employed? Well, um, they were actually started their first band uh, from the state of Pennsylvania in 1957. So it was wow. another. It was several decades later before they decided to actually get rid of these machines, and the other, rest of the states followed soon thereafter uh, in their ne in the remaining decade. But yeah, so it wasn't. People didn't. You know, they liked this technology. It was yeah. exciting to see. Too bad it's so dangerous, right? Exactly. And just so, just so you, you know, people know, these machines are 
today they'll be completely illegal, right? I mean, the amount of radiation that they uh, leak from the cabinet is well above any standard that you want to follow. So what happened over the years after they were banned, a lot of the machines were destroyed. And unfortunately, nowadays, it's, it's, it's hard to find them, especially in such a good condition like the ones uh, we have here. Uh, to give, give people an idea, right? What's the power of the X-ray tubes we use in our machines? So we standardly use a, a 80 kV or 80,000 kilovolt uh, uh, tube in most of our machines up to 130 kV. But as far as wattage, what we get? Oh, so we're, no, we're looking at 16 watts. 16 watts, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this machine here is a 500 watt system. Man. This is 700 watts, right? So yeah. we're like, we have in our system 16 watts and we have this huge oh, yeah. lead cabinet with <laughs> interlocks and you know, redundancy oh, and sure. all that. And these guys, they are 100, 200, 300 times more. And this is wood panel. With a little wood panel. <laughs> Actually, we took off the wood panel, one of them. Yeah. And as you can see here, this is the back of the machine. Yep. Wood in one side, wood on wood the other side. <laughs> And what's interesting about the safety of these machines in general is, is like a lot of the, uh, if not most of the uh, understanding that we have with radiation safety comes from experience, yeah. right? Uh, we're talking about uh, Chernobyl, we're talking about uh, the atomic bombs in mm -hmm. Japan. So a lot of the knowledge we have on radiation safety comes from this incident that happened, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then we learn the effects of radiation on people, right? Yeah. Uh, so these machines were a big piece of that history, right? Sure. Because we had salesmen being exposed to a lot of radiation, mm -hmm. and over the years we've been able to, you know, we're able to understand those effects, and as a result of that, establish standards and norms for, like we said, like we have in our machines, yep. interlocks, lead cabinets, all safety regulations, regulations all safety regulations, yep. which we, at, what we are now is we have the ability to safely operate these systems. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, for eight to 20 hours a day uh, with no risk to your health, right? Right. So, in a way, these machines were, uh, you know, pivotal to uh, uh, radiation safety. Absolutely. Play what you want.